Thank you for your patience, everyone. We are now live on Facebook. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us to discuss potential changes to the DASH network for fiscal year 2022. My name is Whitney Code, and I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager at DASH. Uh, today, we'll be discussing and seeking feedback on major uh, route and service changes as part of the new DASH network. This new network represents a complete redesign of Alexandria's bus network intended to meet the current and future transit ridership demand and to encourage more people to use transit for more trips at more times of day. We look forward to answering any questions you may have and listening to any feedback you may want to share. Uh, this afternoon's meeting is being recorded and will be available on our website at dashbus.com forward slash new network. Uh, next slide, please, Martin. Uh, before we begin, uh, one of our amazing DASH board members is here with us this afternoon, uh, Hillary Orr, and I'd like to give her an opportunity to welcome you all. Uh, Hillary? Good afternoon, and um, thank you. Thank you, Whitney. Um, I, too, want to welcome you all, and thank you for taking the time to participate in this process with us. Um, DASH is really here to serve the community and getting input from the people who use the DASH bus system is a very valuable part of this process. So we really appreciate um, the time that you all are spending. You know, transit is, it's a key component of our transportation system in Alexandria and it provides options for people to get from place to place. And it also helps reduce congestion in the city, which is um, a concern that we have heard from um, our residents loud and clear. You know, this is a really exciting time for the DASH team as they work toward launching um, this network that really came out of a lot of hard work and a lot of conversations with the community during the Alexandria Transit Vision Planning process. And the pro proposed network will create more opportunities uh, for more people to, to use this service. So. Uh, we really look forward to hearing your feedback so that we can ensure that this plan is doing the most good for the most people. So again, um, thank you for your time and uh, for your input. Thank you, Hillary, for that warm welcome. Uh, uh, next slide, please, Martin. If anyone has any additional feedback or would like more detailed information, uh, please visit dashbus.com forward slash new network. For anyone who would like to view information about the 2022 proposed changes in Spanish or Amharic, I encourage you to visit dashbus.com forward slash new network Spanish or dashbus.com forward slash new network Amharic. Uh, now, there are a few poll questions that I'd like to pose to our attendees before we jump in. Caitlin, if you would please bring up poll question number one. The first poll question that we have for our attendees this afternoon, are you a resident of the city of Alexandria? Please select yes or no and then click submit. Thank you, Caitlin. We will move to question number two. How often have you used DASH in the last month? Multiple times per week, about once per week, about once per month, haven't used DASH in the last month, or don't use DASH but often ride Metro bus or Metro rail. Please make your selection and then once again hit submit. Thank you very much. And the last poll question, we have for this section. How did you hear about this meeting? Dash email updates, dash website, social media, flyer posted at a bus stop, 
word of mouth, or other. If your selection is other, um, I encourage you to please uh, let us know what that other method is by putting your response in the Q&A section in the middle of your screen at the bottom. Thank you so much for that feedback. It's very helpful for us. Uh, as we move through tonight's information, I encourage all of our attendees to submit your questions and comments by clicking on the Q&A button on your screen. Type your question or your comment, and at the conclusion of today's presentation, we'll respond to your inquiry. Um, this will help ensure that we're documenting all of your feedback. Uh, now I'm going to turn over the meeting to Dash's senior planner and scheduler, Kristen Cunningham, to provide the first half of the presentation. Uh, we'll then have a few more poll questions for you all, and then the Dash director of planning and marketing, Martin Barna, will complete the presentation section. Uh, Tristan, take it away. Thanks a lot, Whitney, and uh, thanks, Martin and Hillary, for those uh, introductions. Good, beautiful afternoon, and thank you all for joining us. Um, <clears throat> just wanted to start off with a little bit of information as to why we're all here. Uh, just explain the background of the Alexander Transit Vision Plan and um, our first phase of implementation here, which we're calling the New Dash Network. Uh, if you could slide us along here, Martin. All right. Um, so the Alexandria Transit Vision Plan is, uh, to our knowledge, the first comprehensive uh, overview of the, or system-wide clean slate overview of the uh, DASH network. Uh, I've been um, working on it for uh, a couple of years, a couple, maybe even a few years now. I think we started the effort in about 2018 with uh, several rounds of community feedback culminating in our uh, proposed network uh, that was released in uh, December 2019. Um, <clears throat> for those of you that uh, on the call that have been with us for the duration of the process, you'll uh, recall that uh, there were actually a couple different uh, uh, proposals. There was a near term 2022 and a couple different versions of that and then a, an ultimate 2030. Uh, the 2030 network was actually developed with um, uh, considering both existing and future uh, demand for transit service. Um, the 2022, the version of the 2022 network that we are uh, implementing here uh, this year um, is, uh, well, in light of circumstances, sort of a, uh, a, a, a constrained version that uh, is not everything that we wanted to do, um, but it's the biggest bullets uh, to start developing our frequent all day bus network uh, that intends to provide better service throughout the city, um, particularly in areas of low income and uh, minority populations. Um, it's a pretty sweeping change for us um, in a city that has changed considerably since Dash's inception back in 84. Um, but in spite of the sweeping change, 99.5% of existing Dash riders uh, continue to be served in the new network um, most of which uh, get more, better service um, uh, and at more times of the day. Um, so this first bullet point, or I guess that would be fourth bullet point, um, the, 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 the whole idea uh, being to increase ridership by making transit more useful to more people at more times. Um, and really what that means, uh, the bulk of our changes are uh, to our uh, uh, midday and weekend service to bring those up to a point where transit becomes more usable all day long, um, as opposed to really only suitable for commute service. Um, the workforce and the population in Alexandria have changed so much that um, there's, there's just a lot more uh, travel in areas or in times that are not necessarily what we consider the standard, you know, commute hour service. Uh, next slide, please. No, sorry. Uh, so, yep, there you are. Um, <clears throat> so, what we'll be talking about tonight, primarily what we're talking about tonight and really this afternoon, um, is the uh, proposal that we have uh, that would launch on September 5th, uh, 2021, which is a uh, reduced version, as I mentioned, of the uh, 
uh, reduced and modified version of the 2022 recommended network. Um, this is the, again, the first phase of an overall plan that has gradual um, uh, implementation milestones uh, this year, uh, next year, and through until uh, 2030 and maybe even a bit later. Um, but all the changes being developmental towards the 2030 network. Um, and again, the entire purpose is to implement a modern bus network providing frequent and all day uh, service, improving mobility for city residents. Uh, more information about it uh, would be, uh, as Whitney mentioned, available at dashbus.com slash new network. Uh, we've got that information available in three languages. So um, it, it, our minority and, uh, pardon the noise in the background, our uh, minority populations will be able to access that information as well. Um, now, part of this network also includes changes proposed by WMATA. Um, the entire ATV project is a citywide effort uh, evaluating transit throughout the city. And uh, so that includes uh, a small number of changes to Metro bus service. Uh, information about their proposals is available on their website at uh, WMATA.com. Next slide, please. Um, some of the bigger changes, um, the most, one of the most visible is that um, since 84, I believe, uh, since 1984, our uh, route numbers have been AT something, AT for Alexandria Transit, which uh, some of you might have just learned. <laughs> uh, it's been our experience that, um, especially as the population of Alexandria changes, um, th that understanding of what that prefix is, is more and more uh, limited. Um, I've heard in my time at Dash every version other than AT, uh, 80, at, A, T, everything but AT. It's gotten confusing. We've got route numbers that overlap with Metro routes. Um, and so one of the considerations is uh, to just move away from that. Um, and you'll notice that we're proposing um, two different groups of route num uh, numbers. Uh, we've got routes grouped in the 30s. And those are our core routes. Our main routes, every 30 line operates seven days a week. Uh, many of them with the frequent all day service that we speak of and uh, many of them with further um, all day service that'll be implemented in uh, future years. Uh, we've also got a smaller group of uh, lines. I'm using lines and routes interchangeably, but they are lines. Uh, a smaller group of lines in uh, the 100 series. And so the route numbering is intended to give you information about what the routes actually do. And uh, so the 100 series routes are primarily weekday only uh, services, um, most of them being in the peak hours with one exception that's proposed to operate all day, but weekdays only. Um, most uh, dash routes um, are being changed, we, we, we found in our studies that uh, for the routes for now, we're pretty much doing either what they can do or, the, or what they should do or the best that we can do. Uh, so if you are here on behalf of the 2X, the AT8, the 10 or the Charlie, um, schedule a change. Uh, uh, the, you know, when the bus shows up will be different, but the route itself would be uh, largely the same. Um, anything that's not on that list, is uh, subject to a pretty pretty significant degree of uh, change. Uh, now to that frequent network that we've spoken of a few times here, we have this, uh, this calling it a frequent network. You'll see the red text there. The color red is fairly important in this as you'll see on uh, further slides. Um, these routes that we are advertising or billing as frequent will operate at least every 15 minutes all day, seven days a week. Um, again, with the goal of providing more useful transit where more people can use it and increasing uh, mobility options during middays, evenings, and weekends. Next slide, please. So I mentioned that color red. Your homework was to remember it, and now here's the quiz. Uh, you'll see that we are <coughs> showing, uh, so you've got a map here of what the network looks like. And um, it's, it's not like uh, most maps you've seen of DASH service primarily because uh, you, you're not seeing individual routes. You're seeing a sea of red um, with more to come. 
And what that red indicates is not necessarily, well, it, it does show routes that operate every uh, 15 minutes or better. But the real picture that we want people to see is that these are the places you can get to um, quickly uh, with, uh, with, with this uh, uh, frequent service. Um, so if you live in a red and your destination is a, in a red, you're looking at um, a, uh, you're looking at being able to complete trips in uh, a, a pretty short amount of time uh, with our frequent all day network and also counting on the service being there um, and uh, being useful for you. Um, again, those red lines are service that operates every 15 minutes or better um, uh, all day, seven days a week. Um, we do have some uh, sort of a blue uh, color for, for services that uh, still are, are, are uh, uh, seven days a week, but uh, don't meet that frequent all day threshold yet. Um, our, uh, the, 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 the transit development plan uh, that is in public comment phase now uh, proposes a roadmap for bringing some of these services into the red uh, in years beyond fiscal 22. Uh, but this is what we're proposing for this year for the uh, September 5th. Um, and then you'll see also the 100 level services that operate uh, weekdays only. Um, there are also metro routes on the map. They're indicating gray. There are changes proposed to those routes that are subject to a different process than, uh, than, than the, the dash routes. So um, uh, again, the information on their changes is available on uh, WMATA.com. Next slide, please. Actually, that might be, uh, ah, yes. So uh, what we're seeing here on this map, uh, there's gonna be a few maps here uh, that are uh, basically demographic maps to uh, indicate sort of where this uh, frequent service is pointed. Um, th this particular map in red, we're looking at population density, uh, and then you'll see red lines that uh, follow the areas of higher density, which are indicated by darker shades of red, uh, shapes. Um, so you'll notice that uh, within city limits, um, our red line frequent network serves the most dense areas. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I'm sorry, that is, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Next slide, please. Uh, similar picture on this map, uh, but uh, including the entire uh, new dash network. Uh, so even the areas that are not necessarily the most dense on the map are still seeing uh, basically an indication that uh, we're still serving Alexandria. We're still serving 99.5% uh, of uh, 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 stops that currently receive uh, DASH service. Um, but with an emphasis on these darker areas. Next slide, please. Similar to the previous map uh, or the, the, the first map, um, same, uh, same frequent network, but instead of population density, we're looking at uh, residents that are uh, with household incomes beneath the uh, poverty threshold. And uh, same thing, you can see where this frequent network tracks a lot of those areas um, to provide better transit options to uh, uh, areas where uh, demand is the highest. Next slide. And as with the second, you'll see that um, even areas that aren't necessarily served by a red line are still served by uh, some level of dash service, uh, most of which being better than today's service. And final set of maps are uh, minority residents, but same story. Uh, frequent uh, all day network providing a high level of high quality transit service in these areas with uh, uh, large uh, areas of uh, minority populations. Uh, here's the frequent network and the next slide shows our entire network um, and how it serves areas of uh, minority populations. Next slide, please. All right. Benefits of the new DASH network. Uh, in, this uh, network introduces new frequent all day bus service on major corridors across the city of Alexandria, as we saw in the uh, previous maps, um, and provides major increases in access to frequent all day service. 
our current network, you can see the demographics there, low income, minority, and seniors. We really don't serve 30% of those areas or 30% of the people in, in, in those areas have access to frequent all day service. Uh, you can see the dramatic increase in um, access uh, for those populations and all residents indeed uh, in the uh, fiscal 22 network and an even larger uptick in the fiscal or sorry the year 2030 uh, network so you can see the progression from today's service that um, you know does the job but um, a much better uh, uh, much better access in in, in both uh, 22 and in uh, 2030. Um, again, we are maintaining service for 99.5% of uh, existing boardings and um, even non-users uh, benefit when, when, when people use transit, everybody benefits. Even if you're in the car following the bus, it moves faster, more people are getting on, uh, there's less traffic. Um, of course, there are environmental impacts and uh, uh, stronger regional economy. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so our uh, director of planning and marketing, uh, Martin Barn, is on the line here, and he's going to explain how the new Dash Network impacts the, uh, the areas of this meeting, uh, our land here in Potomac Yard. And actually, before I start, uh, we're going to throw it right back to Whitney for a couple more poll questions. So Whitney, would you mind? Uh... Yes, thank you. Uh, so I do have two more poll questions for our attendees before we continue with the presentation. So Caitlin, if you would please put that, thank you very much. Uh, so the first poll question for this section, which neighborhood or neighborhoods uh, are you most interested in learning about uh, today? Arlandria, Potomac Yard, Park Fairfax, Northridge, uh, Del Rey, Central Alexandria, West Alexandria, or Old Town? You are welcome to select more than one option. Once you have made all of your selections, please click Submit. Answers are still coming in. Okay, most of our attendees have responded. So far, West Alexandria, Old Town, and Plymouth Yard are leading in answers with some interest in Park Fairfax Delray in our Louisiana. Thank you, Caitlin. And the next poll question. What current dash bus routes and routes move most often? Uh, the selections are available on your screen. You can also select more than one answer. Um, once you have selected all of your choices, please click submit. about half of our attendees have responded. There's more interest in the AT9 than any other route, but there's answers for every one of the routes this year. Thank you, Caitlin. That is helpful. Martin, were you able to hear Caitlin's overview? Perfect. It was, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so I want to remind everyone to submit your questions or comments in the Q&A section. Uh, we really want to respond and hear what you have to say. Um, and now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Martin Barner, the DASH Director of Planning and Marketing for the second half of the presentation. All right. Thank you very much, Whitney, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, so for my part of the presentation, I'm going to try and take a little bit of a deeper dive into uh, the Arlandria and Potomac Yard areas, also with a focus on Park Fairfax and, um, and Del Rey as well, just uh, to, to cover those areas. Um, you know, I'll, I'll talk about each of the new routes and try to provide some um, context as, as to how it relates to the existing routes. Um, but if there's anything that you have that doesn't make sense or, or any questions you have, uh, you know, we've got our Q&A at the end and happy to, happy to answer anything that you've got, whether it's for Arlandria or for West Alexandria or wherever. Um, so feel free to type those in to the Q&A as we're going through the presentation. And there also, I should note, there's an opportunity at the end for some additional poll questions where you'll be able to provide some uh, specific feedback as to what your thoughts are on the uh, on the new the new DASH network. Okay, so what does the new DASH network mean for, for the areas that we're talking about here? Um, 
I think largely you'll see that there's um, some significant improvements that we're uh, planning to operate, um, specifically as it relates to, excuse me, oh, I'm sorry, here's a, um, here's just an overview of the, uh, the, the area. Obviously you have uh, the West Bleed Corridor, Potomac Yard Metro, which is coming in next year, that will be opening. Um, and then you've got Northridge, Park Fairfax, Arlandria, and Potomac Yard, Delray. Um, so this is a, just a zoomed in version of the map that you saw earlier that Tristan shared. Um, and I'm gonna go through each route um, individually. Um, so I will do that now. So the first one that I wanna highlight is the line 36A slash B combination. And this is a uh, route that will replace the 89. The 89 was I think the, the route that most people were interested in hearing about today. Um, so this is, this is the direct replacement for the 89. It follows pretty much the exact alignment as the 89, at least the 36A does. Uh, with the exception that it does not uh, go up to NVCC it, from Bradley Shopping Center, it goes to Mark Center via uh, the existing AT5 alignment. So anyone who's taking AT9 and is used to going all the way to NVCC, you will have to make a transfer uh, probably here at Bradley Shopping Center to line 31. Uh, but otherwise, um, you know, the, it's very similar to the AT9, uh, with the exception being that it's much more service. So we are talking about here, as Tristan noted, this is a red line. So we're talking about uh, service every 15 minutes, all day, seven days a week. Um, so if it's like 6 p.m. on a Sunday, 11 a.m. on a Tuesday, uh, if you're standing on a stop along West Glebe or Kenwood or King on this route, you'll know there's a bus coming within 15 minutes. So that's that's really highly useful service and we think that a lot of people will be able to benefit from that. Um, so this route is a little bit uh, unique in that it's a, a split route with an A and a B. Um, this was a change that we made recently based on some public feedback that we got. Uh, but basically what you need to know is that it it's runs every 15 minutes along the trunk portion, which is the solid red parts. But then in a couple of these areas, including Park Fairfax, it splits off into an A route and a B route. And basically every other trip will do the A and every other trip will do the B. So basically if you're on one of these split segments, you'd be looking at service every 30 minutes, all day, seven days a week instead of every 15. Or if you can walk, if you can walk for example, if you lived uh, some, somewhere along Martha Custis and if you walk up to Martha Custis and Gunston, you could wait there and then you'd actually get the 15 minute service. Um, so, so this split alignment was brought in um, to provide some additional coverage to certain areas. Um, we've got some, this is some new service along North Van Dorn Street, uh, which was helpful for Park Place. But then we also were able to introduce the split routing in Park Fairfax as well. Um, the original routing was going to go, going to go along Martha Custis uh, as the current 89 does. But then we were able to split the route and uh, provide 30 minute service on both uh, both sides uh, because of um, because of that split. And so we, we can um, we can provide coverage now to Valley and Gunston, uh, which is currently served by the Metro Bus 22A. But um, it'll be a much more consistent uh, all day uh, bus service with this 36B route, uh, which will again go into Shirlington and then continue on to Potomac Yard and connect to the, the Metro Station, which opens up next year. So that'll be a really important feeder to the metro rail system for areas like Arlandria, Park Fairfax, and, and, and the other parts of, of uh, this area. Um, one thing to note about this route as well, the reason that we we're able to um, put so much additional service onto this route is that we are relying upon uh, 395 commuter choice funding. This is some funding that uh, leverages the toll revenues from 395 express lanes to help local transit projects. So we've, uh, we've applied for that and we are, uh, it's looking very good that we'll be able to get that funding. So uh, with that funding, we are expecting that we'll be able to run this 15 minute service uh, through, the, through the whole, um, the, the, the whole uh, 36AB alignment. So a couple routes are staying pretty much exactly the same and the AT10 is one of them. The AT10 currently is a current dash route that runs from uh, King Street Metro in Old Town all the way up to uh, Potomac Yard via Delray, Mount Vernon Avenue, and then uh, up through a bit of our landry as well. Um, so this route is just saying the exact same alignment. Uh, the only difference is that it's now called line 33. It has the same headways, uh, weekdays, Saturdays, Sundays, uh, 30 minutes on Saturday, 60 minutes on Sunday, which is the same as the existing AT10. Um, you know, some of the, the trip times and timetable might change a little bit, but, uh, but overall the service levels will be the same. Um, so that's, that's the, basically the new AT10. And that will connect to the uh, Potomac Air Metro again from uh, Delray and, and, and these parts of the city. Uh, so a new route that I wanted to show is uh, line 34. So in FY22, uh, this route will not serve Potomac Yard. It will actually just be uh, in Old Town along the solid blue alignment. This is picking up parts of the existing AT7, um, AT2 and AT5. 
along Slater's Lane and other parts of Old, North, Old Town North. Um, so, but then when the Potomac Yard Metro opens, uh, which is slated for I think the, the first half of next year. So when the Potomac Yard Metro opens, this route will change. And instead of just serving Old Town and Old Town North, it will actually um, not no longer serve Braddock Road Metro. And instead we'll go up Richmond Highway and then connect to the Potomac Yard Metro. So you'll have a connection between Old Town and Old Town North uh, to that Potomac Yard Metro uh, when, the, when the station opens. So that'll be an important connection for folks traveling back and forth between uh, kind of the heart of Old Town, uh, the waterfront and Potomac Yard, where we've got a lot of new development coming on, um, especially with the, um, you know, the, uh, the Amazon National Landing Campus and the Virginia Tech Innovation Center. So that'll be a very important route um, going forward. And then um, this slide shows uh, for those that are uh, typically riding the AT3 and the AT4, um, those are kind of some, some of our uh, more popular commute oriented routes. They run during weekday peaks only from about 6 to 10 a.m. and about 3 to 7 p.m. Uh, you've got the 103, or sorry, the AT3, which is replaced by line 103. It follows the exact same alignment as the AT3 from Braddock Road all the way to the Pentagon. And then likewise, the uh, AT4 is replaced by line 104 which runs from Braddock Road uh, along the same line as the AT4 through Cameron Mills Valley, you know, Martha Custis and Park Fairfax up 395 to the Pentagon. Um, so those, those two routes will stay the same from Braddock Road to the Pentagon. However, uh, previously they have run into Old Town. Uh, we are, are no longer uh, proposing to do that. Instead, there'll be a connection that they can make to the Old Town Circulator, which will have highly frequent service in Old Town. So there should hopefully be a pretty short, easy connection to make it Braddock Road Metro uh, for anyone who is used to taking the AT3 or the AT4 into Old Town. Um, in terms of service levels, uh, currently these routes are operating every once every hour due to the pandemic and the low ridership that we've been seeing on them. Uh, our proposal is to bring them up to operating every 30 minutes um, during uh, in, in FY22 when we launched the new, ne new network in September. Um, and when you combine the two together, they're, they're scheduled to be offset. So for those that are at Martha Custis and Gunston, uh, that means uh, you'd be seeing one or the other every 15 minutes during the peak periods. So every 30 uh, combined, combined is every 15. Um, one other note uh, that's important for, for this area in, in the North Ridge and Park Fairfax is we have an existing route called the AT34 loop, um, which runs uh, during off peak periods. So these, these 103 and 104 uh, run during the peak. Uh, during off peak periods, service is, uh, has previously been provided by the AT34 loop which basically follows a similar path uh, as these routes and then also goes into Old Town to City Hall. Um, so as part of the ATV process, uh, this route, the 1834 loop was identified uh, to be discontinued due to, due to uh, historically low ridership over a longer period of time. Um, and and that's, uh, that's included in our proposal for the new DASH network which would launch in September. Um, so, so this area would no longer have off peak service um, some parts would be able to use the 36A, 36B. Uh, others would be able to benefit from the, um, you know, the service on West Glebe, including some, some metro routes. Um, and then you've obviously got the service um, uh, down close to the Braddock Road Metro. But there would be parts of Russell Road and Cameron Mills Road that would not have off-peak service. So something to, to keep in mind. This slide just summarizes uh, most of what I just described. Um, you know, we've got really good service on the, the, the old AT, or the current AT9 alignment with this new 36AB. Um, we're replacing AT3 and AT4 with lines 103 and 104. And then we've got this new AT10. Excuse me, I'm sorry. We're having all kinds of background noise today. Um, so we're having uh, line 30 and a new line 34, which is going to provide a great connection from Old Town to the new Potomac Yard Metro. And then as you see there, Metro bus, the 10A and B are being maintained as they are currently configured. So um, no changes there, uh, but you can check out the WMATA website, WMATA.com for any other information about their FY22 proposals. So last couple slides here before we wrap up and get to the Q&A, but I did want to just provide a brief update on uh, fare changes. We are not proposing any uh, fare increases in FY22. We're, we're staying with the same $2 base fare, $45 uh, monthly unlimited rides with the Dash Pass. Uh, a couple positive things that we're proposing uh, that should make things um, less expensive or, or more convenient. Uh, first off, we have the, the Smart Trip version of our Dash Pass, which is what you load onto your, your Smart Trip card. Uh, currently, those are tied to the calendar month, so the first of the month through the end of the month. But uh, it's a little bit confusing because depending on when you purchase the pass, it's either good for the current month or uh, if you purchase it after the 15th of the month, it's good for the following month. So it's a little confusing. 
but we're proposing to simplify that and just make it a 31 day rolling pass so that as soon as you you buy it um you know it's good for 31 days after that you don't have to worry about thinking about you know when you buy it when it's good for it um we're also proposing a, a fair reduction that would uh, eliminate the uh, a small peak up charge that affects some of our senior disabled riders who use the seven day regional pass um so that will be a positive for them uh, we're also um Supporting Wamada is is uh, Wamada is looking to expand some of the, uh, the past products that they offer that are good on both Wamada and regional providers. An example of this is the seven day regional pass, uh, which is a product that you can buy that's good on uh, both uh, Metro Bus and Dash and other bus providers. Um, so we're looking to have uh, well, Wamada is looking to potentially expand to offer other similar products like that and Dash, you know, perhaps a monthly product or a three day pass or things like that. Uh, Dash is is supportive of that, and uh, you know we'll have to work out the exact logistics. But but we are uh, we, would, we would support those uh, passes, and, and would, Dash would most likely accept them. And we still have our Dash Bus app, which is a mobile ticketing offering where you can purchase Dash um, Dash fares and and Dash uh, Dash passes through through your uh, smartphone, um, which is different from the Smart Trip app that we might have launched last year, um, and it's only good on uh, Dash buses. So uh, wrapping up, we've got our, our summary here of the different outreach meetings that we're doing. This is our third of four community oriented uh, meetings. We've got a public hearing coming up um, next month. That's the, uh, the 14th of April, um, where we'll be, that, that's actually our board of directors meeting. So if you, you wanna provide any comments directly to the board of directors, you can uh, do that at 5.30. Please make sure to pre-register and, and get there on time because we do the hearing right at the beginning. And then uh, if you're, if you're not able to attend any other meetings or if you want to just you know review the information and then provide it uh, provide feedback in other ways uh, you can look at our our, our facebook uh, site we've got our um, twitter our, our phone uh, the email i would highlight dash bus at alexandria.gov is a really good place to send emails uh, that we can take a look at and, and provide to the board for their consideration uh, but uh, just want to stress that we're accepting feedback through april 16th so please make sure to to get in before then uh, with that i'll turn it back over to whitney Thanks, Martin. Uh, okay, so we're going to jump into uh, the Q and A uh, section of our presentation today. Um, it is not too late. If you have any questions or comments that you'd like to add, please do so in the Q and A section, um, and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so the first comment, actually, let's go with questions first, and then we'll come back to comments. Uh, the first question I have is, will DASH make any uh, special accommodations for travel to the Victory Center on Eisenhower Avenue? Sure, so I can, uh, I can talk to that a little bit. Um, so the Victory Center, for those that are, are not familiar, is, um, is a large, uh, large uh, office building that's on Eisenhower Avenue. It's about, um, say, a little less than a half mile uh, due east of the Van Dorn Metro. It's currently vacant. It's a very big parking lot. I think, um, you know, it, 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 um, they, they've tried to get tenants in there and they've been, uh, had some bad, bad, uh, bad fortune with that. But um, eventually, I think we're going to see a lot, a lot of um, activity there, a lot more development there. There's some proposals to redevelop uh, parts of that land. So that will be a, um, a major center of commercial activity um, in the near future. Um, so currently, it's served by the AT7 um, and it would in the future be served by line 32, uh, which is effectively replacing um, the uh, AT7. And I can show you right here. Um, there's line 32, Victory Center is, is right in here basically. Um, so, oops, oh, let's. There we go. So yeah, so it's right in there and line 32, uh, it, it will, in FY22, it's proposed to kind of stay at the current service levels that the AT7 is at. Um, however, it does have weekend service, which the AT7 does not currently operate on weekends. Um, so, so there'll be um, kind of same service levels every 30 to 60 minutes um, along that stretch. However, given the, the, the Victory Center, the development on Eisenhower, in Eisenhower Valley, and then also in Eisenhower East at Carlisle in this area, uh, we, this is a, a, one of the routes that we really want to um, bring up in terms of service levels. Um, so in FY23 and FY24, we have a couple of different proposals where we'll be bringing up um, perhaps uh, peak service on here will be running possibly as frequently as, later, as every 15 minutes. 
So you could have 15 minute service along the Eisenhower corridor. Um, and then eventually in the long term, this would become um, close to or, or perhaps become a, a frequent all day service, uh, depending on the, the density in this corridor. So that's, that's currently where we're, we're headed. So right now it's currently keeping the same service levels. Uh, but but in the near future, we're anticipating some increases, um, you know, pending pending additional funding. Thank you, Martin. Uh, next question: Please explain the change to line 34 in Old Town when the Potomac Yard Metro opens. Sure, I can take that one. Um, so as I mentioned a little bit about, um, you know, line 34 in, in FY22 is just uh, going to operate along this solid blue line from Braddock Road Metro down to Lee Center. Um, and, and it's as I mentioned, it's replacing parts of uh, the 82, 85, and 87. Um, so with the opening of the Potomac Yard Metro, um, you know, this, this route is able to go to its, um, really what we intended when we initially designed it. Um, you know, we were hoping that we introduced this that it would go up to the Potomac Yard Metro, but since the Metro is not there yet, uh, we, we needed to keep a Metro rail connection for Old Town North. So once it actually is open, then this, the, this route, Line 34, will go from Slater's Lane, turn right on Richmond Highway, and go up to the uh, Potomac Yard Metro. And, and again, we're anticipating that would be spring or summer of next year. Um, so that's not the only change, though. We're also um, wanting to change the alignment through Old Town North. Um, so that instead of running on North Fairfax, where we have a couple other routes running, it's kind of redundant. We want to re realign it to Pitt Street, North Pitt Street, um, to provide some additional coverage in that area. There's some some low income housing in there. There's also a couple new developments, um, including uh, at Montgomery and uh, and Pitt right here. There's some restaurants and mixed use. There's a new Harris Teeter in here as well. Um, so this this is a, a an area that's not really covered well by transit. And we felt that since um, you know, North Fairfax Street has, has plenty of buses on it, that we would be moving it over there. Uh, the reason that we're not offering or proposing that sooner is um, because we want to have some additional public outreach on that. And also because there'd be some stop improvements that would be needed um, along Pitt Street to, uh, to add bus service there. Thank you, Martin. Uh, next question. What is the impact of commuter choice funding to the 36 A and B? Sure, so good question. Um, and I did uh, kind of touch on this a little bit, but um, so like I mentioned, uh, this route would run every 15 minutes, all day, seven days a week along the, the trunk parts and then every 30 um, along the split portions, which are shown in dot red, kind of red dots. Um, the, the commuter choice is, um, it makes it possible to, to add that much service to this route. Um, and, you know, I, I'll note that um, we are, uh, though we have not received 100% affirmation, we're very confident that we will be able to um, get that funding and, um, and be able to implement the full, the full plan that's shown here. Um, the reason for that is that the, um, the amount of funding that's available exceeds the amount that has been applied for. So there's actually more funding available than, than has been asked for. Um, and uh, in our projects, we've seen some scores for our projects and they, they are, um, they've scored relatively well. So based on those factors, we are uh, fairly confident that we will be able to uh, implement the full 15 minute service along the entire length of this 36 AB. If for some reason something happened uh, where we would not be able to get that funding, the, the fallback would be that it would only operate every 30 minutes along the trunk and every 60 minutes along the red dots. But again, we, we think that that's an extremely unlikely scenario. Um, and, uh, and we will know um, for sure in the next, um, basically the next, month or so. Thank you, Martin. Uh, next question. You mentioned uh, the Dash Bus app, and so we had a question, uh, does the Smart Trip app work on Dash Buses? So if you could maybe just explain the difference between the Smart Trip app and the Dash Bus app. Sure, I can do that. Um, yeah. So yes, yeah, so there's two, there are two separate apps. One is the Dash Bus app, which is only good on, on Dash Buses. The other is the new Smart Trip app, which was introduced by Wamada late last year on uh, iPhone or Apple phones and soon to come to Android as well. Um, but Dash accepts both of these apps. So both, both the Dash Bus app and the Smart Trip app are, are uh, available for use on, on Dash buses. Um, the, the Smart Trip app is, um, is uh, offered by Wamada. 
if it allows you to uh, to purchase a virtual smart trip card that you can kind of keep on your phone so you don't need you can actually throw out your your old plastic card once you transfer it to your uh, to your phone um, and the, uh, the 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 if you have the app loaded uh, the the virtual smart trip card will actually be stored in your apple wallet on your phone which allows you to just kind of tap your phone on the fare box and it'll just beep and you'll pay your fare that way. And you won't have to worry about having a card. It'll just be all on your phone. Um, and there's also some advantages too, because the, um, the smart trip app allows you to, um, to add value to your card. Uh, it's basically having a, um, you, know, you, know, you, you know, when you go to a Metro rail station, you see those ticket vending machines where you add value to your smart trip cards. It's basically like having one of those on your phone. Um, you, can, you can add value to your card. You can add passes. Um, you can set up uh, auto reload. Um, you, can, you can check your balance, you can do all kinds of things. So it's very convenient and uh, it is accepted on Dash buses and, and, and basically anywhere you can use a smart trip card, you can also use the smart trip app. So it's very convenient. And um, yeah, we're definitely recommending that, that folks use that, especially if they ride more than just Dash. I just wanted to add on to that a little bit. Um, one of the most um, significant improvements um, with that app, um, there, there's some limitations to the bus technology. It's just quite old to be frank with you. Um, <clears throat> such that if you were to make a purchase, it takes time for that purchase to actually end up on buses so that you can get the value you paid for. Uh, that is to say if you made a purchase online. Um, with this app, since your phone is connected to the internet, any purchase that you make in terms of passes or value adds or anything like that are more or less immediately available uh, for your use on the bus. Um, so we're very excited to, um, uh, to accept that and also excited for the um, improvements in customer experience that that'll bring. Um, as Martin mentioned, it's basically a ticket vending machine in your pocket. Yeah, that, that's a great point. That's just just to, oh, just because that point can't be um, overemphasized. So you can, you, can see a met, you can see your bus coming down the road. You can add your, your funds to your smart card. By the time the bus pulls up, it, 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 the funds will be available. Currently, with a smart trip card, it can sometimes take two to three days, so you have to think ahead. Uh, but so it's a huge, huge uh, change. So thank you, Tristan, for reminding me, bringing that up. Uh, thank you both. Our next question, how solid is the opening date for the Potomac Yard Metro Station? Most large projects, such as the Silver Line Extension, Purple Line in Maryland, are typically years behind schedule, yet Dash is hanging its hat on the uh, Potomac Yard Metro in 2022. Is that realistic? So, um, so the, the project is a, is a WMATA project um, and the city and WMATA are working very closely. And, and if you've been by the, the station, you can see that they're making a lot of progress. Um, you know, Dash is kind of a little bit right in the back seat on this one. So we're, we're not, um, you know, we're not actively involved in the project uh, process, but um, the latest that we've heard and, and what, what the city and, and Wilmot have been sharing is, is, is I think spring 2022. Um, you know, hopefully, hopefully they stay on, on track. I know there have been challenges with other pro uh, projects with, with the Metro Rail, but um, so far it sounds like they're, they're staying on schedule. Um, I think as far as Dash is concerned, we, we have some flexibility. Um, you know, we, we've got basically two routes, well, a uh, couple routes that are gonna, are gonna, be, gonna be modified when the station opens so that we're providing service to it. Um, but, you know, we're, we're basically just waiting on uh, when we get the, the word from WMATA and from, from the city that the station is getting ready for revenue service. Um, and, and hopefully that'll be, you know, spring or summer of next year. Um, but uh, I think there's a, um, a lot of information on the city's website. There's a Potomac Yard Metro um, implementation group that has regular meetings. Uh, so if you're interested in, in, uh, in kind of learning the latest on the schedule and, and how, how well they're doing, um, you know, you can check out the city's website, and they've got the, the PYMIG uh, group that meets regularly and, and provides updates. Thank you. And the last uh, comment that we have for today, uh, retailers and restaurant chains uh, close underperforming locations to maximize profits. Dash seems to view the AT34 loop from the same perspective. The single direction counterclockwise loop operates super efficiently with only one vehicle and one driver serving over 50 stops on two major routes, eliminating all off-peak service from areas generating the highest per capita tax revenue does not reflect well on our priorities. 
the loop should be maintained, even if to serve the few who depend on its reliable service. Thank you for that comment and definitely be sharing that with the board. Um, I, I think the decision uh, to, to, to make that change was a part of, as I mentioned, our overall housing and transit vision plan, uh, which was a policy uh, policy discussion and decision first and foremost about um, how to allocate resources. Um, so, you know, that that's not set in stone. You know, we're still looking for feedback on that and the board can can provide um, guidance on that, um, you know, at, at their April meeting with the public hearing and then also uh, in May, hopefully with their um, final consideration of the plan. So we'll be sharing that feedback with the board um, and uh, thank you for the comment. Yes, and thank you to everyone for all of your questions and your comments. They are very helpful throughout this process to us. Um, I do have a few additional poll questions for you this afternoon. Um, before we close. So Martin, if you would please pull up the contact us slide as we go through these poll questions just so they can be in the background. Sure. And Caitlin, if you would please uh, share the first poll question in the last section of poll questions. Please provide your response to the following statement. For myself and my own personal transportation needs, the new DASH network will be better than or comparable to the current DASH bus network. These options range from strongly agree to strongly disagree. If you would please make your selection and click submit. Responses are still coming in. We have about half of the attendees responding so far. Give you all a few more seconds to finish up your answers before I close the poll. Thank you, Caitlin. Let's, uh, Caitlin, let's go to the next poll question, please. For the city of Alexandria as a whole, the new DASH network will provide better or comparable overall bus service than the current DASH network. These responses also range from strongly agree to strongly disagree. Please make your selection and click submit. About half of respondents have sent in their answers. I'm going to give it a few more seconds so that anyone who's answering can finish up. All right, thank you, Caitlin. And the next poll question. All right, these are the final three poll questions that we have for you this afternoon. The first one is, if you selected agree or strongly agree to either of the previous questions, please provide the primary reason or reasons for your response. Uh, you may select more than one option here, and if your selection is that final option of other, please put that answer, that detailed description in the Q&A section so we can have that for our records. And I'll give you all just a few minutes to read through the questions and make your selection. We have a few responses. Maybe a few more seconds when you want to answer the questions. Thank you, Kate. Let's have the next poll question. All right, if you selected disagree or strongly disagree to either of the previous questions, Please read through your options. Again, if your uh, response is other, please uh, give us that detailed information in the Q&A section. And I'll give you just a few moments to read over these and make your selections as well. Okay. 
All right. And uh, the last poll question that we have for you all this afternoon. If you selected not sure or neutral or need more information to the previous question, please make your selection here as to why you made that selection. And again, there is an other option. And if you would please use uh, the Q&A box to provide us with that uh, response as well. All right, thank you all so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, if you have any additional feedback or questions, please email us, call us, reach out to us on social media. Uh, or visit us online at dashbus.com forward slash new network. Um, again, all of our contact information uh, is visible on the slide. Uh, a recording of this meeting will also be available at dashbus.com forward slash new network as well. Um, we ask that you provide any feedback that you would like to share with us by Friday, April 16th. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Hillary Orr for joining us today. I'd like to thank uh, Martin and Tristan for that wonderful presentation. All of you for the great questions and comments that you submitted uh, and Caitlin for making sure that we didn't crash during this meeting. Uh, thank you again uh, and have a good afternoon. <laughs>